you all uh tonight's message is really simple but I think it's important and the title simple I will fulfill God's purpose for my life I will fulfill God's purpose for my life the modern message is I will fulfill God's purpose for my life you all, I have been in church all my life. There has never been a time that I can recall where I had stopped going to church for an extended period of time. I do believe that the longest time that I've ever been without going to church had maybe been about three weeks. And that was my first semester in college, when I first got the mortgage, and didn't want to get up on Sunday mornings. But then somebody told me you can get paid for playing for church. <laughs> and even now, I realize that if I was not getting paid, I would still be in church as much as possible on Sunday morning. As I reflected on this fact about my life, I realized that everything I went through, everything I have overcome, every failure and every success was all a part of the plan God has for my life. Of course, of course, Brian, there are things that I should celebrate. There are things that I am ashamed of. And there are things even I wish I could just simply just redo. Yeah. Amen. But in the grand scheme of things of my life, I realized that if I had not been through all of that, I would not be able to relate to the people that are coming to join our church. Amen. All of us in here have has a story. I'm re I reminded you just two weeks ago, we all have reasons why we do what we do and why we praise the way we do and Amen. why we walk the way we walk and why we talk the way we talk and even why we, why we eat what we eat. But it just does not stop there. My story is only unique to me. Likewise, your story is only unique to you. However, for most of us, if we had an opportunity, which we need, to sit down and talk about our lives to each other, we would realize that many of us have experienced some of the same things, but from different perspectives. Do you realize, do you realize that everything you've been through, everything you've overcome, every success and even every failure has shaped and molded you so that you can be effective in fulfilling your purpose. Amen. What if I? What if you? What if we? What if this church? What if this state? What if this nation? What if this world failed to fulfill our God-given purpose? Who would God use to accomplish his purpose? The answer is simple. He would use and choose and even create someone else to do his will. He will send someone that is flawless, sinless, and just as much human as he is God. But y'all got to wait a minute. Y'all know that already happened, didn't it? It already happened. We already know. Do you know his name? His name is simply Jesus. He has fulfilled his purpose. But our purpose still needs work. 2000, 2013 years ago, 2013 years later, the world is still fighting religious wars. People are still trying to justify sinful behaviors to accommodate individuals who want to live in opposition to the Bible. People kill for no reason. The government is more concerned about getting their own individuals agendas done, and less of what, the, what is necessary for the people they are elected to serve. Mm -hmm. 
Well, some some urban schools, some some urban schools are overrun, no, no, underfunded, no, no, no. and not educating students of minorities mm -hmm. uh, the way oh, affluent no. schools do for wealthy children. Some churches, some churches are more concerned about the, uh, the amount, amount the, the amount in the offering plate, the size of their congregation, the entertainment of their members, and less focused on the teaching and instilling God's standards in every aspect of their ministry. Well, y'all, I, I have to let you know I struggle with it. I struggle with this. I struggle with this. Why is it that so many people are confused, living in darkness, and in depression, when God is love, and he sent us, Jesus Christ, to live abundantly, and even to have eternal life. We all have a God-given purpose, but that everyone wants to or will do what God has created us to do. I'll say that again. We all have a God-given purpose, but there... Not everyone, not every person wants to or will do what God has created us to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter whether we are willing or we are kicking and screaming. We all have a God-given purpose embedded in us. That if it's not fulfilled, then our lives have not given God glory. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, then... God will do whatever he has to do to make sure the purpose in you is accomplished and he gets his glory. It's written in the text. It's written in the text. We got to look at the text. Verse 11, I've spoken it. I will bring it to pass. I planned it and I will do it. Whatever the plan that God has for our lives, our church, our ministry, it will come to pass. As I further thought about this, our God's purpose for our lives, for my life, your life, and our lives, I could not help but realize we all need to recognize a few things to help us fulfill our purpose. Here we are, let's look at the text. Verse 11, the Bible says, calling a bird of prey from the east. Well, I wondered, I wondered what kind of bird would God need to fulfill his purpose? Would God call a raven? I think he could, but the raven is often seen as a thief and even sometimes sneaky. Would God call a vulture? Well, he could call a vulture, but would God really want a vulture who is known for eating decaying animals, leading a group of people through life? Would God call a hawk? It is quite possible that he would, but the hawk is small and may not cover a large range of territory to meet his needs. Would God call an eagle? Well, in that case, I think he would. You see, the eagle is a large bird that can carry a lot of weight. The eagle is capable of living in almost all environments and is able to adapt to the condition of the environment in which it lives. The eagle likes to live near large bodies of water and where there's plenty of fish to catch to provide food for them and their nests, their nests. The eagle, the eagle, I didn't even know this, builds a nest in trees usually 60 feet tall or higher. The nest can often very, be very big, up to 13 feet deep and 8 feet wide. It can weigh up to 2,200 pounds. The trees, the trees where the nests are is, must allow the eagle to have clear sight of all its surroundings. Although an eagle might, is not the largest bird, it is a bird with great vision. That, in my opinion, puts the eagle in the forefront of many of the other birds of prey which God have all have good eyesight. Eagles have great vision. They have a clear membrane that cleans their eyes from dust and dirt. Even while the membrane is cleaning the eye, the eagle can still see clearly. Point number one, here you are. If we're going to fulfill our God-given purpose, we have to have the vision of an eagle. 
Habakkuk says it like this in verse chapter 2, verse 2. Write the vision. Make it plain on the tablets. So he may run who reads it. People perish for the lack of vision. People struggle to reach goals and feel worthless if they have no vision. People don't want to belong to churches who have no vision. Most people don't want to hang out with people who aren't going anywhere. Most people struggle to focus on their vision when they get dirty, when they get hurt, when they are even messed up. Most people struggle to focus on their vision when life, family, and or their friends have disappointed them. Our vision, our vision is not necessarily what we see immediately in front of us, but what we can see happening in our lives, what we can see happening in our families, what we can see happening in our ministry, what we can see happening in our church, what we can see happening in our community. Our vision, our vision will help us paint a picture of the purpose we are going to accomplish. Our vision is formed from us realizing what our purpose is. Our vision guides us to fulfill our purpose. Here it is, life builders, if we're going to grow and build relationships and not a religion, with people, we can't do ministry without having a vision. We have to be the eagles that don't mind focusing our vision on problems in our community. We have to be the eagles that focus our vision on addressing the problems in the community. We have to be the eagles that don't mind focusing our vision and don't mind swooping down and grabbing lost young men and lost young women who the devil is trying to lead to self-destruction. We have to be the eagles that don't mind focusing our vision on making sure when we are in worship, we communicate the love of Jesus Christ to all who worships with us. We have to be the eagles that don't mind focusing our vision and demonstrating to God's people that their lives are precious to him and they should consider the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be the eagles that don't mind focusing our vision and even teaching our members and visitors how to fulfill their God-given purpose. We have to be the eagles that focus our vision on training young people to fly high and overcome any adversities that come up in their lives. We have to be the eagles that focus our vision on loving the seniors, encouraging adults, incorporating young adults, mentoring children, and even inspiring children. We have to be the eagles that focus our vision on making sure our church meets the needs of the people, the community, and the city. We have to be the eagles that focus our vision on teaching everyone that when all hell breaks loose in their lives, to get down on our knees, reaffirm our, reaffirm our faith, reconnect our communication with God, and even refocus our vision. Well, y'all, we're not going to be long. I'm, listen, it's not. Point number two, real easy. We all have to realize where we come from is the foundation we need for what we have been called to do. Amen. We all have to realize where we come from is the foundation we need for what we have been called to do. Verse 11, again, far from a far, from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. Daddy, I struggle with this. I struggle with this. I, I really couldn't grasp this a little bit. I'm sure you wonder how this relates to us. Well, two perspectives, two perspectives. I would like you to consider distance and time. From a far off land, We'll talk about distance first. From a far like from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. For some of us, God has brought us from a long way, from a far place. Maybe it was across town, maybe it was across states, maybe it was across the sea, maybe it was across the country. But in order to fulfill the purpose God has for your life, you had to travel from one place. To another. Mm -hmm. The place where you started may not be the place where you end up. Some of us will have to move from a comfortable place mm. to a discomfortable place uh -oh. in order for God to fully develop your purpose. Mm. Some of us 
have to move from an uncomfortable place to a land of comfort just so that we can remind those there that they not to take their blessings for granted but appreciate the rich blessings they already had. Some of us have, have not been settled in any place too long simply because we can't find our own niche. You're always in transit, but if you look back over your life, you can see how God has allowed you to form many relationships with people all over that will help you develop and shape your purpose. Some of us are even scared of movement and have become stagnant in our purpose. It might be just time for you to pack your bags, get some fresh tennis shoes or even some brand new high heels and start your journey. You already have been prepared. Now it's time to start working on your purpose. This is the remarkable part. Y'all, this is the remarkable part. Once you start walking, once you start working, God will start sustaining, and God will start providing. I'm saying that again just for myself. Once I started walking, and once I began to begin to work, I found out that God will sustain me, and God has provided for me. I'm going to say that again because somebody else. Once you start walking and start working. God will do the sustaining and even the providing. Perspective one, distance. Perspective two, time. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. This far off land is not a physical place, but a measurement of time. Some of you maybe have been like me, running from what you've been called to do, thinking over time, God will change his mind Amen. about your purpose. Wow. I'm, you know, listen, I, I, I think some of y'all might hear that again. Some of you may be like me, running from what you've been called to do, thinking that over time, God will change his mind about your purpose. Well, I'm a living witness. It don't happen. God will not change his mind and he won't let it go until you fulfill it. Until I fulfilled it, until we fulfill it, until you fulfill it, God won't let it go. Some of us have been called since birth. Hello. Some of us were called as children. Some of us were called as teenagers. Some of us were even called well into adulthood. But for whatever reason, we have allowed time to stand in the way of our purpose. Our far off land has become the time which separated us from when we heard the call and fulfilling our purpose. Well, do you realize there are senior citizens, men and women, men and women, young adults who were called as children? That's right. They suffered all their life. They live in depression. They have low self-esteem. They receive little gratif gratification. They have low self-confidence. Their, their lives are a living hell because they have allowed years and years and years of time to pass without working on their purpose. Well, I'm here to declare to everyone in here, it is now time to stop running from your purpose. If your purpose is to help, start helping. If your purpose is to pray, start praying. If your purpose is to give, start giving. If your purpose is to lead, start leading. If your purpose is to preach, start preaching. If your purpose is to teach, start teaching. If your purpose is simply to love, start loving. If your purpose is to manage, start managing. If your purpose is to care, start caring. It doesn't matter what your purpose is, when you start fulfilling your purpose, your life begins to change. Your self-esteem becomes lifted. Your depression is turned to joy. Your hell becomes your heaven. Your slow self-esteem becomes your self-assurance. Your hate becomes your love. Your frustration becomes your peace. Your heartache becomes your helpmate. All we have to do is work our God-given our God -given purpose. And God will do the rest. Here it is. We want things to change in our lives, but we won't work the purpose God has given us for our life. We work... Work your God-given purpose. Here, you already are prepared. You have already been equipped. You have already been qualified. You have already been justified. You have already been forgiven. The only thing that is holding you back is you. From this day 
forward. From this day forward. Don't allow anyone to stop your progress. If they're not helping you, then honestly they're hindering you. You have, I have, we have a God-given purpose that has to be fulfilled. Well, how many times, how many, how many of you all realize that you're sitting here right now is confirming the vision that God has given me to help me fulfill my purpose? Here it is. The most incredible part. My purpose won't be complete if your purpose is incomplete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to help each other. We are life builders, not life hinderers. We help. We love. We encourage. We pray. We pray. Life builders, this is what we do. We support. We'll laugh. We'll mentor. We'll praise. LBCC, this is what we do. We cry. We worship. We give. We share. What are you waiting for? It's time to get up, get off your rusty dusty, brush yourself off, clean yourself up, ask for forgiveness, forgive yourself, and get ready to do what God has called you to do. Well, y'all, we, we closing out. We closing out. We closing out. But I still got some more of this scripture. It's only three verses, but it was powerful. The plan is laid out for us. Life builders, it is written in verse 13. I'm bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away. And my salvation will not be denied, delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion. That's ironic that we're in Zion, right? I will grant salvation to Zion. My splendor, the King James Version says glory to Israel. Well, pardon me, I like to rephrase this for my own understanding. I'm bringing my righteousness to Baltimore. It's not that far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to life builders. My glory to the United States. Life builders, it is time for us to get our vision tight. Get our acts together and start walking in our purpose. The word of God has never failed. That means we have to make sure we're ready to receive all that God is going to pass out to us. Well, you, ask, you may ask, you always know I got a question. What's going to be passed out? So glad you asked, and lucky for you, I found the answer. So you don't even have to research. God is about to pour out his righteousness, his salvation, and his glory. Now you say, that sounds like three more points, sir. I don't got that much time. No, but we're going to break it real short. He's going to pour out his righteousness, his salvation, and his glory. Life builders, if we're going to be able to reach the people God is sending our way, we have to be ready to accept his righteousness, we have to be ready to accept his salvation and even his glory. Well, I believe God's righteousness will be reestablished on earth. Righteousness is simply, in this text, means justifiable and defensible. In other words, God's righteousness is coming to clean up all the sinful behavior that is happening in this world. There will come a point in time where we all will have to align, ourse our, align ourselves as much as possible with the word of God. God's righteousness has never has been overlooked by many churches. From the pulpit to the door, ministries all around this world have fallen victim to pleasing their members rather than pleasing God. Amen. At this time in the text, listen, I'm, I told you to be moving forward. At this time in the text, at the time the text was written, salvation was not available in the way that we know it. But now we have Jesus Christ which is the key to our access to eternal life. We have to make sure that Life Builders is a church in the community that continually and deliberately shares the plan of Jesus Christ. Salvation was freely given to us, and we have to do our part to make sure the word goes out and let people know that Jesus lived, let people know that Jesus died, let people know that Jesus rose, and Jesus lives today. We have to remind Baltimore we have to remind Merlin, and we have to remind the United States with that without salvation, their eternity will be spent in hell. But with Jesus Christ, their eternity is in heaven. Y'all, I think I just said something to myself. Y'all, we going from Baltimore to the state to the country. Life builders can be. Finally, finally. God's glory. 
will be in our presence. The glory. Y'all, I got to tell y'all, I didn't write this part. The glory, the majesty, the power, and the honor of God will be, will be released over the earth. He will display his power and show himself to be a covenant-keeping God by delivering his people from their bondage of sin. I wrote this part, though. In his glory, there is love. In his glory, there is peace. In his glory, there is joy. In his glory, there is deliverance. Daddy, in his glory, there is healing. In his glory, there is restoration. In his glory, there is hope. Brian, in his glory, there is anointing. Don Tria, in his glory, there is blessings. Donetta, in his glory, there is holiness. Damon, in his glory, there is forgiveness. In his glory, there is pardoning of sin. In his glory, there is strength. Chantira, in his glory, there is worship. In his glory, there is revelation. In his glory, there is truth. In his glory, there is grace. And in his glory, there is mercy. In his glory is everything that we need. But we have to be ready to receive it. Yeah. Life builders, I believe, I believe with all my heart. And I'm done. That if we collectively, individually and collectively, begin to work our vision, to fulfill our purpose, we will be released from his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Be ready to share his salvation. And ready to embrace his glory. Mm. I can't do ministry without you. Mm. I don't want to do ministry without you. I need to do ministry with you. Life builders, life builders, we all have the potential to be planted in three communities across Baltimore. Yes. Mm. We don't have to be a mega church to be effective. Yes, yes, yes. We need to begin to effectively write our visions, mm -hmm. work our purpose, and prepare for his glory. There is no secret what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure, in my place of life builders, I want to make sure we are all in position to fulfill our purpose. Yeah, Amen. Yeah.